There are two kinds of people in this world, those who squeeze the toothpaste in the middle and those who roll it up from the bottom. And I squeeze in the middle and let's just say, my husband has his own bathroom. There are two kinds of people in this world, those who keep their phone charged and those who let their phone run completely out of charge. There are those who set an alarm and get up and those who set, hit snooze three or four times and then get up. There are those who have no notifications on their phone and those who have thousands of notifications. Those who place the toilet paper turn outward and those who turn it inward. There are those who eat the pizza crust and there are those who don't. There are those who drive with the gas tank on E and those who never let it get below a quarter of a tank. There are those who lick the frosting out of the Oreos and there are those who don't. There are those who will cheer for the NFC in the Super Bowl and there are those who will cheer for the AFC. There are many, many differences in people. We have really just touched the surface. We are different races, we have different education, different incomes, different personalities. We have different hobbies. Some people can play instruments and some can sing. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sing for you today. Diversity is beautiful. Don't you love all the different flavors of life? I love all the different types of food. I love Indian food and Italian food and Chinese food, Thai food, American food, Mexican food, and of course, barbecue. I hope I get to have some barbecue for lunch today. Without diversity, we're stuck with uniformity. Uniformity is boring. We are not soldiers in the clone army. We need diversity because everybody can't be good at everything. We need all of the different talents. We need all of the different flavors. Sometimes diversity can turn into division. Division is when opposing sides disagree and they claim superiority. Division destroys unity. Instead of concentrating on what divides, we need to concentrate on what we have in common. Here are three big things that we all have in common. We were all created in the image of God. Genesis 1:27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We all matter to God. We all have dignity, value, and purpose. When you disagree with someone, you might think that person is bad and that, they are, that you are good. Don't do that. You could be right and they could be wrong because there is truth, but each person bears the image of God. What does it mean to be created in the image of God? We were made to resemble God. Adam did not resemble God in the sense of God's having flesh and blood. John 4, 24, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. God exists without a body. We are like God mentally, morally, and socially. Mentally, humanity was created as a rational agent. In other words, human beings can reason and choose. This is a reflection of God's intellect and freedom. Anytime someone invents a machine, writes a book, paints a landscape, enjoys a symphony, calculates a sum, or names a pet, he or she is proclaiming the fact that we are made in God's image. Morally, humanity was created in righteousness and perfect innocence, a reflection of God's holiness. God saw all that he had made and called it very good. 
We have a moral compass. We tend to cheer for the good and despise the bully. We tend to feel guilty when we know we have done something wrong. Having morals is an indication of being created in the image of God. Socially, humanity was created for fellowship. This reflects the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We were created for relationship with God. Also, it was not good that man was alone, so God created Eve. Every time someone marries, makes a friend, hugs a child, or attends church, he or she is demonstrating the fact that we are made in the likeness of God. The second thing that we all have in common is that we have all made mistakes. We have all missed the mark. We have all sinned. Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying the one rule that God gave them. We have all disobeyed God. Even though we were created in the image of God, we also have a sin nature. Our sin nature has taken us away from our perfection and our fellowship with God and others. But the third thing that we all have in common is that we are invited into the kingdom of God. Mark 1, 15. Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Followers of Jesus Christ have been proclaiming this good news ever since. If you have accepted Jesus as the forgiver of your sin, and if you have accepted him as the leader of your life, then you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. If you would like to become a follower of Christ and join the kingdom of God, I hope you will contact the church. You can call, text, email, or comment. I'm going to share a story with you about a high school football team in Texas. Now, football is big in Texas. The Friday Night Lights TV series was set in Texas. Watch this five-minute video. A Friday afternoon comes to a close, and in the small town of Crum, Texas, that means it's time for football. However, tonight's game is different. Tonight, home team fans will cheer on the opposing team to tackle, sack, and score against their own sons, friends, and brothers. Tonight, they cheer for a school called Gainesville State. Located just 30 miles up the highway, yet seemingly a world away, Gainesville State School is a maximum security facility for youth offenders. To be a student here is to be a convicted criminal. What kind of things have the boys done to be at the Gainesville State School? Anything from, you know, um, burglary or, you know, aggravated robbery, assault. All of them are felony crimes. We don't have youth with misdemeanors. Okay, so once they're here, it's serious business. Yes. Here, students that serve the majority of their sentence plus meet strict academic and behavioral standards earn a shot at the school's slightest brush with the outside world. The chance to play football. But as every game is an away game in a competitive and sometimes hostile environment, players find defeated seasons reflections of defeated lives. My peers around me that play on the same team, I have heard them being called racial slurs and all kinds of other stuff by an opposing players. They're trying to prove a point that we already lost our chance to play high school football by the decisions we made. You gonna take hand the ball to fullback, he's hitting right Now what kind of support do these kids get from their homes? Not much. A lot of them are, you know, maybe one parent. Families, maybe no parents. They weren't given the, the chance of having a, you know, a mom and dad at home. And uh, that's a sad, sad thing. Heading into their final 2008 game against Grapevine Faith Christian School, Gainesville State players look to end a demoralizing season. However, Grapevine Faith coach Chris Hogan... Right there, Donington! ...looked to end something entirely different a pattern of failure. When I saw them on the schedule, we felt like here are 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and they're somebody's little boy, and they're locked up in prison. So the idea was to just give them hope, given the natural <laughs> hopelessness that is normal in prison life. When the boys arrived, we had fixed them a meal, shared the gospel with them that day before the game, 
and we have a big banner for them. They run through the banner. We have people who made spirit signs. And then half of our crowd literally goes across, and we have a roster with their name and, and cheer for them. So they got the same experience that most every other kid in Texas gets on a Friday night. I was surprised. I was like, they were calling us by our names and everything. And at first, we thought that they had another player with the same name. So I didn't know what to think. It was just, I don't know, it was just something I felt like God was just touching, up, touching upon all of us and letting us know that there's people out there that care about you. They could care less what we was in here for or the crime we committed, and they want to love us like their own kids. In the two years since Coach Hogan and Grapevine Faith's display of encouragement, others have stepped up on their own will to continue the effort. Tonight, it's Crumb Volunteer Youth Leader, Brenda Kirk. When I initially started, I, my plans were to invite the other churches in town to just sit with our church on the visitor side and cheer for the boys. And it just got a whole lot bigger than that really quick. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, those kids, they don't get a lot of support. Uh, they would really yeah. appreciate it. What, what time is that going to be? It's a 7.30 game. When I heard about the effort going on, I talked to my boss. And 96.3 KSCS decided that we would just volunteer to help promote the event. We really just want to show these guys the love of Christ. And we want to show these boys that they matter. As word got out, a community responded. Local businesses donated pregame meals. Crum High School provided their visiting team both a band and a cheer squad and a spirit line formed that charged up fans and players alike. That's why I'm a teacher and a coach, is, is to do things like this. Every day we, we, we do it for our kids right here in Crumb, but to, to go outside of Crumb and to do it for others is very special. The Gainesville kid recognized we might be wearing helmets, but there's something bigger happening. And I think what they found out was people believe in them. The kids would tell me they were calling my name. My number. And they were cheering for me. And I don't even know those people. And that offers an encouragement to them that they have not seen probably in a lifetime. So whose team were you cheering for? It wasn't really about the game, was it? That youth minister and that coach at the Christian school had a higher perspective. They were living out what it means to be a Christ follower and what it means to be in the kingdom of God. I want to have that higher perspective. Isaiah 55, 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I pray that we have eyes to see from God's perspective. Now our country has just had a very divisive election. Our two party political system has created intense conflict. Half of you watching right now voted Republican and half of you voted Democrat. Half of you are happy and excited that your candidate became president, and half of you are angry and upset. That does not sound like unity. So today, I want to bring you a higher perspective. It's okay to cheer for a football team. Any team will do. I hope you get the hat and the t-shirt. And it's okay to have political opinions. It's okay to vote and to run for office. I hope you get a hat and a t-shirt. God loves those who voted Democrat. God loves those who voted Republican. There is going to be another election. There's at least one every year. There are lots of games going on in the world and you can cheer for whichever team you wish, but your highest affiliation is with the kingdom of God. Why would we as followers of an eternal king allow ourselves to be divided by temporary political leaders? Why would we let ourselves be divided by lesser kings? Jesus is my king. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And because of this, 
We should be most concerned about being good citizens in God's kingdom and about extending God's kingdom. Now near the end of his life, Jesus is chatting with his father and Jesus prays this, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. That was Jesus' prayer about the disciples. Now, if we read down a few more verses in John 17, 20 through 24. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This unity idea seems to be pretty important. It's up to us, church, to completely agree to love one another as Christ has loved us. We may disagree on many issues, but our one and only command is to love. Love God with everything we have and love our neighbor. We sum it up around here as love God and love people. The kingdom of God wins or loses by how we act every day. We must not allow anything or anyone to get between us and our mission. Certainly, we are not going to allow a politician to divide the kingdom of God. Both political parties have gotten it wrong. Both parties have failed morally and in leadership. They are not worthy of our total allegiance. They are not worthy to be our first priority. Our hope does not come from who becomes president. Our hope comes from the Lord Jesus. And Jesus did not come to take sides. Jesus came to take over. Jesus wants to take over your heart. Jesus wants to cover all of your sin with the payment that he made on that cross. Jesus wants to take everyone to a better place, the kingdom of God. Put Jesus Christ first in your life. I think all of you will agree with that, but most of us need a little more instruction. This unity thing doesn't come natural. Unity with God is supernatural. And how do we do it? Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all this, over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. First off, we need to realize that we are holy. Holy means set apart. We are special to God. We are his children. We are loved dearly. I like the word dearly is in there. We are not just loved, but we are loved dearly because we are God's chosen people, because we are holy and dearly loved. We are to clothe ourselves with compassion. Now, what is compassion? It means to have tender mercies and inward affection. It seems that a lot of people have lost compassion. Sometimes people can be cynical and think the worst of others. Sometimes I can be that way. I'm sure we have all had our moments 
When someone attacks us with a snarky remark, we are prone to retaliate with another snarkier remark. And snarky means rudely sarcastic or disrespectful. It's pretty much the opposite of compassionate. We have to stop that. Next is kindness. And I think of kindness as an act of kindness. Kindness is what we do. It's not a feeling. It's actually doing something to be nice to someone. We have all heard of random acts of kindness. We need to do more of those. Next, we are called to humility. Be humble and don't be arrogant. Don't always think that you know all of the answers. Listen to others' views. Everything that each of us believes to be true came as a result of our experiences, how we were raised, where we went to school, what we've seen, what we've read, and where we live. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a reason for what they believe. Listen in humility, not thinking that your knowledge or experiences are better than anyone else's, just different. Also, have you ever noticed how when someone has done something wrong, we tend to think that that person has bad character? But when we do something wrong, we don't see the problem with it. For example, a young woman shows up late for a meeting. We immediately think that she is lazy, irresponsible, and disorganized. Then one day, we are late. But we don't think that we're lazy, or irresponsible, or disorganized. No! <laughs> We were helping our children with a problem, and that made us a little late. But we were being responsible. We tend to judge others more harshly than we judge ourselves. We need humility. We are called to be gentle. Have you noticed how the tone of someone's voice can make all the difference in how the message is interpreted? Be gentle, not harsh. Don't be abrasive. Don't say things just to get a reaction. Do you think anyone ever changed anyone's mind by being abrasive? If you really want to get your point across, be gentle. We are to clothe ourselves with patience. And what is patience? Patience is the capacity to endure what is difficult or disagreeable without complaining. Sometimes we just have to accept that what it is, is what it is. Being disagreeable and complaining about it is not going to change anything. It will just put us in a worse mood. Endure your difficulties. Have patience. We are commanded to bear with each other and to forgive as the Lord has forgiven us. Aren't you, gl aren't you glad that you've been forgiven? I know I am. Forgive each other for any wrong. It's not easy. But we don't forgive out of our own power, but through the power of God. Colossians 3, 12 through 14, one more time. Listen for what you need to work on. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Over all these virtues, put on love. And not just any love, unconditional love. Love that is undeserved. Love that asks nothing in return. Love is the first and really the only commandment. As followers of Christ, we are getting better and better at loving every day. I'm going to keep working on it, and I hope you will too. Now, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are those who live in unity in the kingdom of God. And there are those who are invited. Will you pray with me? 
O Lord God, make us one. Bring us unity in the kingdom of God. Help us to reach out to those who need you so badly. We ask that you would increase our compassion, increase our humility, increase our love, that the, the world will see you through us. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.